the Miami, Ohio Red Hawks. So we'll toss it up on the screen here. And Miami of Ohio, seven and six last basically year. Basically, going in order of you know how they finished last year. That's yes, that is the order that I'm okay. going here. Yeah, I, I was trying to figure out like the math on how we're doing this. Yes, like, the order of their their finish from last year. So uh, Chuck Martin, okay. the head coach here, seven and six last year. They went five and three in the conference. I'm going to do this for every conference, uh, doing it in alphabetical order. Uh, just a little old, like I. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about that. I wanted to do it a little bit different this year. So going in the order of finish from 2021. That's that's the way I'm going here. Uh, so yes, the Red Hawks, 5-3 and three in conference last year. Their projected SP Plus record this year, 7-5. and five. Uh, They are only returning 47% of their defensive players, or their defensive production. That's number 120 in the country. Their offense, though, does bring back 76%. That's number 36. So that's uh, that's pretty good. They lost wide receiver Jack Sorensen. They lost uh, their safety, Sterling Weatherford, defensive end Cameron Butler, linebacker Ivan Pace Jr., etc. Uh, the top players for this year, the guys that they are going to lean on, the quarterback, Brett Gabbert, the wide receiver. Uh, let, let's see if I can do this. Mac Hippenhammer, <laughs> linebacker Matt Selepek, and the safety, Michael Dowell, who is a transfer from Michigan State. Uh, I think he's going to play a key role here. They lost a lot on the defensive line. That's where we're going to start with Chuck Martin because that's how his teams have typically lined up and done well with. Um, they lost a lot to, to graduation, a lot to transfer. I mean, they've always been their best at stopping the run, and now you got to just kind of plug holes and, and figure it out. Uh, the question here is can the incoming transfers, new, you know, new names, find a way to keep this defense running top flight? Uh, they're going to need to find a way – to limit opponents in the passing attack because they were number 86 in defensive passing success rate last year, number 93 in defensive explosive rate given up. Uh, so they they were good, you know, against the run, but teams could throw on them, which is why, you know, they ended up 7-6 and six last year. Uh, and, you know, they won their bowl game. They beat North Texas, so I guess that's good. Uh, you know, projected SP Plus record this year is 7-5. and five. Uh, You look at the schedule, you know, again, with these MAC teams in their non-conference, they're going to collect checks. I understand, but they play at Kentucky, uh, Robert Morris versus Cincinnati, and then at Northwestern. Like it, they maybe they got a shot against Northwestern. Uh, I would imagine they'll handle Robert Morris. You know, the the big thing here is going to be Gabbert coming back for his senior season. The quarterback, the offensive line needs to reestablish the run game this year because they were not good last year. Number ninety six in rushing success rate, which is strange for that bunch. But uh, but Gabbert is is a good foundational piece. I'm I'm curious your thoughts on this bunch. We we both like Chuck Martin, right? We we've yes. always kind of liked him. But if you don't get that offense going, and now your defense takes a hit, this could get a little tricky. What uh, would say you? Yeah, I, I I like this team. I think they're gonna be okay. Uh, kind of only in the concept that I don't think their non-cons that super hard. I mean, obviously, Kentucky and Cincinnati are big time. Um, not to upset our Northwestern boys, but Northwestern historically just does really bad against G5 schools. Uh, and <laughs> that that you know, is Robert true. Morris doesn't scare me. So yeah. I'm actually counting that as a win for them. I got them 7-5. and five. Uh, it, And once again, that is, I think they are – better than the rest of the East, and I think they'll pull off one of these big um, non-con wins, and that's strictly just the Northwestern Mac math that I've seen in the past. I could uh, I could see that. Um, they they do have a schedule that, that lends itself to, to helping, right? They've got Kent State, Western Michigan, Ohio, and Ball State all at home. Uh, yep. Defensive line is going to have to develop quickly, like very quickly. Oh, um, I agree. I agree, but but it's Miami, Ohio, man. They're, they're like these Midwestern small schools. Um, they're they're going to be able to get you know big guys that know how to tackle. They're not going to have the speed that you know power schools have, but but they got big strong dudes, and they usually are coached up well and, and can tackle. So defensively, I'm actually not super worried. I got you. I got you. See, so you've got them seven but, but and five. That's that's, that's strictly. Mac bias. That's all it is. Is I've been watching the Mac for a long time, and and if you've got a lot of you know speed, 
you can sometimes make them look bad. But if you're going to match them power for power, it's really hard to blow one of these teams out. I do want to know who is going to be uh, the wide receiver for Gabbert, right? His favorite guy last year, wide receiver Jack Sorensen, uh, he averaged over 108 yards per game last year. You know, who is going to be the guy? And then we've got to figure out, can the offense identify a lead back? I would imagine they'll come up with something. Like, you and I trust Chuck Martin to be able to get this thing done, right? You, you've got him 7-5. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, I've got 6-6. Six and six. Would 7-5 surprise me? Absolutely not. I, this is a and good team. Here's the thing. I don't know that one guy is going to do that. I don't know that one guy is going to replace him. You know, could they have three or four guys, you know, add up to all those yards? I don't know that the offense takes a huge hit. They just find somebody else that's getting open. I don't think you're wrong. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.